I'm Sarah Whittingham. I'm an anesthesiologist at Cleveland Clinic Marymount Hospital. I'm also a clinical faculty member here at Northeast Ohio Medical University, and I have Parkinson's disease. I'm probably the luckiest Parkinson's patient in the world, you know, because one of my favorite hobbies and thing I'm most passionate about, which is, you know, fitness and running and racing, I love to race, is the thing that's gonna help me the most and help me to keep ahead of, of Parkinson's disease. So running um, became something that helped me get through hard times. Um, you know, the tough days at the academy, um, and then later on, you know, through deployments and other, turns out Parkinson's, other things, running's kind of been the common thread that's kind of helped me find my way when things get tough. In Parkinson's disease, what's very well established is that environmental factors can increase the risks. Veterans are, are at an increased risk in general for developing Parkinson's disease. Back in 2019, we received grant funding to run an experiment to test the effect of exercise in a newer model of Parkinson's disease. We wanted to see the effect of this treadmill running on their motor function, but then also we were interested in looking at cognitive function, neuropsychiatric function, and actually olfactory function as well. And we found that the exercise did actually improve motor function, uh, but that it also actually had a positive effect on our cognitive test. I think the brain is, is amazing. It's very adaptable. I think that the combination of the medications that I take and the exercise um, have, have made a huge difference. So in this new project that we're working on that's supported by the Department of Defense, and what we're going to do here is work on trying to model this progression to cognitive dysfunction in Parkinson's disease. We have a whole new generation of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans that, you know, are, we are seeing increased rates of, of Parkinson's, and it's important that we support research to figure out why that's happening so that we can prevent it happening more in the future. We're working with these animal models, but we want to keep it as close to the human condition as possible because we think that's going to yield the most promising results and potential treatments for patients.